So for a while I've been using the UCD 3138-064 and the 3138 uh, plain Jane version. And uh, one of the things I've noted is that the projects are really, really difficult to set up um, using their uh, wizard in the Code Composer. So I thought I would just go through a really quick uh, project setup. Um, with what I've learned uh, that gets a, a project set up and compiling. So, you know, first off, you got to create a workspace um, that you're going to start your projects in. And uh, I've already done that, so we'll just, um, you know, it's, it's already set up, so I just need to now start with creating a project. Um, you know, to do a, a uh, different workspace you just need to go into the file and then you go down to the switch workspace and you can select whatever you want to choose um, you know or other which will allow you to create a, a brand new workspace but since mine's already created I don't really need to do that um, so the next thing is that you want to actually start uh, by creating a um, code composer project for the UCD family so you go up to new um, code composer project and a menu will pop up and you'll see like generic arm 7 um, you have to you have to make sure you've got the UCD uh, um, variants of the uh, libraries and such already for composer uh, code composer downloaded so in this case we'll just type in UCD and up pops up you know your selection menu so I've got right now an eval board for the 64 um, that I'm going to set up the project for so we'll just uh, click on that and I'm just going to call this um, test uh, project right and actually test project uh, example there and I'm going to start it up with a, an empty project just with the, the dot name um, being included so when I hit finish, um, oh, and one more thing, uh, the output format you want to leave in the legacy um, uh, COFF uh, or COFF uh, format. Okay, so now it's going to stir up and create the project for us. Um, so one of the things that you'll note is that you get two files um, in your project, which is the dot name and the uh, the assembler. So within the assembler, the very first thing to do uh, this this on its own, the template or their their startup uh, project will not compile. Um, you have to do a few minor things to fix it up to get it to compile. And one of them is going into your dot assembly uh, file <coughs> and changing the uh, the jump um, function. To an underscore instead of uh, a dollar sign, and uh, it's already defined up on tops so as a global, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll save that. Um, within your dot name, you need to have a place for the reset vector to jump to, and uh, I've got uh, some other other projects here that uh, are using that right now, so I'm just going to. Um, grab that that function and just paste it in so what you need is the uh, the pragma interrupt definition and the function and this will be the the jump from reset uh, from the assembly to the uh, C code and so this again does not get you to um, an actual compiled uh, project that will work um, the next thing that we need to do is uh, add up um, or add some uh, additional uh, um, uh, interrupt uh, handlers so that um, there will be a place for uh, or the compiler won't complain about uh, missing uh, uh, links. So we'll just go in and, and add uh, the other remaining um, pragmas. So this will be the ones that you should be seeing is um, the undefined instruction exception, the abort prefix 
prefix or sorry fetch uh, exception the abort data fetch exception exception uh, there's a software interrupt standard interrupt fast interrupt so these need to be declared or else commented out in the um, uh, actual uh, assembly file is it's going to be looking for those declarations um, so that gets you almost there but not quite um, one of the other things that is missing uh, is some of the special type declarations uh, so in this case you'll see that there's like the, the uint32 declaration uint32 uint8 so that is not a standard uh, type declaration um, this is a copy from some of the eval code that TI has provided for the uh, UCB family um, so I went ahead and created a, a, a dot H type um, file that has the uh, uh, declarations for these types um, we can go ahead and just actually do um, unsign uh, int32 or int I should say um, and just copy that across and I will get rid of this error temporarily when, when we do go to try to compile this and we'll just set this one to error okay so that deals with that so will this compile on its own right now? No. So we have to do some fixes. Um, one of the things we got to fix up is actually the settings for the project. So when we open this up, um, one of the things that we have to be looking for is to go in and set some of the uh, paths to be correct. By default, they won't necessarily be correct. Um, some of the other things we need to do is set up so that we can in the future um, use the debug functions that um, TI has provided through their PM bus interface. Now you'll have to download um, some of their projects that have the PM bus uh, declarations and bring them into your project. Um, so we'll just go step by step here. So to use the PM bus tools, uh, to so the UCD family has in ROM uh, a bootloader that's a PM bus bootloader. So you need to create a, um, a file format that is a Tektronix um, hex file in order for that tool to download into the UCD. So in the build options, you'll see like several tabs here. So just go through them one by one. I usually set up this to enable the parallel jobs. Um, and this is where we need to add the Tektronix um, uh, file, or sorry, not file, but the, the command line. So I'm just going to grab that from a, another file I have here open and just paste it in and put its description in as well. So again, this is not enough to, to get you a compiled file. There's a whole bunch of little things we have to go through. So the rest of these things you don't have to really worry about. They've already been set. And uh, so we can just move along. Um, you should probably set your project to the Thumb 16 instructions and then specifically specify the files that need to be 32-bit, which are typically the interrupt um, files. Uh, that way you can uh, save a lot of code space. So optimization, uh, you should choose about two, and it's it's a reasonable compromise. So for the uh, include, um, again, we can just leave it as default. One of the things you'll find is that um, if you try, or if you download the Code Composer, um, the default files, uh, header files for the UCD family, uh, at least for the 64 will have incorrect uh, file names embedded and that will generate uh, some compile errors. So you'll have to correct those um, when you go to, uh, to use that or pull out the header files as a separate directory and uh, correct them and keep them as a permanent uh, uh, 
directory directory that you add to your projects because um, I'm not sure if TI updates this on a regular basis or not uh, when they're doing their uh, their updates for code composer um, so right now we're we're pretty much good here so we'll just keep on going through so these ones don't really matter um, again this is nothing that we have to worry about uh, at the moment so the parser the parser uh, preprocessing option so this is important because if you want to use uh, their tools um, to debug your registers through the PM bus this needs to be set up into manual mode and the let's see if I get this right um, there's a couple of, of additional checkboxes that you have to do um, let's bring this up quickly so you need to have the continu continue compilation uh, after using the dash pp option checked and you need to have the uh, preprocesses only um, and maintain comments checked uh, depending on the version of code composer and such the order of this will flip around so you have to really look for the right um, the right checkboxes to check. Um, so once this is done, this gets you pretty close to being able to debug your registers through the PM bus uh, tool, uh, which I'll show in another another video. So predefined um, for the predefined symbols, uh, I would suggest adding an additional one of UCB thirty one thirty eight. 064 all in capital uppercase um, equals one. Uh, some of the some of the include files are looking for that particular declaration. Um, diagnostic diagnostic options nothing there really to worry about. Uh, runtime model nothing there. Um, advanced optimization I think there's nothing there as well that we have to worry about. Um, Entry exit nothing, library assumptions or function assumptions nothing, uh, assembler options, um, assembler options. I don't think there's anything in that one as well that you have to worry about. Um, although you do, you should probably click on uh, the keep the generate generated uh, assembly language file just for you know be able to go in and take a look in the, uh, the listings file. <coughs> It's just extra files that get get generated uh, and, and then aren't deleted. Uh, file type specifier, nothing. Um, directory specifier. Uh, again, uh, if you want to keep your your directory clean, um, you're probably best to just drop it into. Um, oops, drop it into the. Uh, the workspace debug directory. Um, in this case, uh, I think you can actually call out the uh, project. There's a there's um, actual variables that have paths defined, so we can just pull up the uh, the project location. So this will be a good example here. And then specify the uh, the uh, debug um, oops, debug folder, and that should be good for all of them. So I'll just say preprocessor files in there as well. Um, the default uh, assembly file directory put in there as well. The um, xref file directory as well can go in there. Um, yeah, so that that kind of will keep your your main directory cleaned up. Uh, there's nothing else there that you have to worry about. So now we're on to the linker setup. So linker setup um, again, you have to to make sure that you've got your paths correct. So 
you need these ones by default. Uh, this is where you will go to, um, uh, or where where the the uh, TI tool will go to look for for uh, certain files as well. Um, the heap size I wouldn't leave it at uh, unless you're you're using the heap, uh, which for this particular part uh, I don't really see a point if you're not um, if you're not doing any dynamic memory allocation. So I usually just drop it down to 10 just to have it defined but not used. And the uh, stock size down to 200, so that leaves more um, more RAM available. Um, so that pretty much covers that. There's not much to do in the file, file path. So into the advanced options. So again, not too much. So we have uh, a couple more things we have to set, and I believe that we're looking at. At uh, just trying to think, there is there is one thing in the command file pro preprocessor that we actually do have to um, make sure it is set, and that would be, um, I believe, here. So we want to define a UCD thirty one thirty eight. 064 equals 1 and yeah I think that pretty much covers uh, everything uh, we do want to do uh, uh, generate uh, for far call trampolines leave that on and I believe that is it so if I say OK um, we should be able to just make sure we this is clean. It's a brand new project. Shouldn't be anything in there. So if I hit compile, and this is important thing to to note, um, you cannot compile interrupt files in uh, from 16-bit mode. And when you set your project to be thumb 16, it defaults to every file. Every time you touch touch the uh, configuration, it defaults every file to or every, every file to thumb 16. So you have to manually go in and reapply the 32-bit setting. So now, if I do this again, few more errors <laughs> so this is the fun part so they continue to have um, issues with creating and or linking these files so I'll just go back and check the settings one more time This should not be here. I don't know why it is here. So that would explain why it's uh, doing what it's doing. All right, let's try this one more time. So clean off the project and start it again. And of course, I've made a change, so it's defaulted to it again. So let's go and fix that up too. And again, so now we've got our project compiled. So this is just sort of an example of how difficult it is to set up a project for a UCD part. Uh, Co compile or composer does an extremely poor job at um, setting up the project, and the documentation on getting those settings correct is very very poor. Um, but I do hope that uh, this gives you at least a, a guideline to help set up a project um, and uh, you know if there's there's uh, questions about setting up the projects I strongly recommend that you contact your TI representative so thanks again for watching